Now, Eyewitness Sports. All right, welcome to Double OT with Ruthie Polinski. A rare Monday taping. Monday, early in the week, kind of too sort of early. I like it. You do? Yeah, sort of recap. We can and look recap. Ahead. We can recap. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. As the schedule permits. Yeah, it was um, my first Monday at Patriots today, and it's kind of fun to be there. Like you can still talk about the game. Yeah. Like usually it's like on to the next, but of like course, you still. Wednesday, but wait, it's they on haven't the done next. any game planning. Yeah, yet, they so. just look at the film from the day Jets before, get played. yelled at. Yeah. Jets haven't even played. Yeah. Jets are already 19-point dogs for, <laughs> for this Sunday. And if they lose tonight too, like. Oh, yeah, it's going to get ugly. Get ugly yeah. uh, we'll talk about the Pats' easy schedule okay. as it relates to them going 19-0 shortly. But first, let's recap the Dolphins game. What were your biggest takeaways from that one? A lot of takeaways. Uh, the defense. I mean, the Dolphins are a bad team, right? I mean, they're bad. And when you say they're bad, it's also <laughs> almost like they're not even trying. Like, these are professional football Did players. It feel like that to you? And they're in the NFL for a reason. So, like... They ha it just feels like there's something missing. Uh, if you know after week one, players are already requesting trades. There's already chaos kind of after week one. Something's not right in terms of the culture, the atmosphere, the coaching, the, the um, team management, I guess. So they're not finding a B-flow is what you're saying. I don't know. I'm not going to put it on B-flow, but, like, I'm just – I just feel like there's more to it because these are professional football. Ryan Fitzpatrick is a decent quarterback. Did you see his body language? He it's was horrific. demoralized. I mean, there were balls wide open, players that were yeah. just like catching balls and dropping them. It was just like but, to the point of so – anyway, that's beside the point. In terms of the Patriots, yes, the Dolphins are bad, but like the Patriots are really good. And I think we learned a lot about this team in terms of, you know, the, for absolutely the defense – the Dolphins didn't even get into field goal range. Mm. I mean, they couldn't get any sort of offense going. So I think that's really exciting and encouraging about this defense. Um, and then turning, obviously, defense into offense is obviously a blast, right? But I think in terms of um, the offense, uh, there were some points left off the board. There was, I think they could have won by 100. I literally think they could have won by 100 if they would have. Well, if the just, kicker made some kicks, they'd be <laughs> winning by more. We're not going to talk about the kicker, and Grash doesn't like to talk about the kicker. But Steven Guskowski had a bad game. He had a bad game, and he him. doesn't do well in Miami. They mentioned this on the broadcast. I don't know if you heard that, but he, he's like an 80-something percent field goal doesn't kicker, like but heat. in Miami, he's like in the 70s. So it's just, I don't know. It's It was hot. It, it was, was hot. hot. That's what they all said. I guess that didn't yeah. come through yeah. on the TV. What was your takeaway? My big takeaway is, uh, as it relates to like 2007, beating up on, on bad teams. I like winning 43 nothing or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, don't let them score. Right. I think getting the shutout was a huge yeah. thing if mentally. It was 43-7. Shutting out teams. They've given oh, up awesome. six points in their last three games, oh, including awesome. the Super Bowl. Two pick sixes. I mean, those aren't plays you see often in NFL seasons, let alone twice back in a to game. Back-to-back pick sixes. It was back-to-back back drives. Back-to-back, back, unbelievable. And seeing Jamie Collins back in the mix. Yeah. I think the defense's play was the most encouraging thing. Yeah. Uh, the first drive obviously was awesome because it was the big question, what's Antonio Brown going to do? Clearly, they had the mindset, let's get him involved right away. Mm -hmm. Three catches on the first drive. They marched down the field, get the touchdown. Um, and he had a, a good touchdown that you could argue was offensive P.I. Yeah. But um, – I, I would say I was pleased with his game. Four catches, I think eight targets. I mean, he and Brady weren't necessarily in sync the rest sure. of the way. Um, but as Josh Gordon was saying after the game, it's a pick-your-poison situation with the Pats, especially with the three receivers and he, Edelman, uh, and Brown. So I think how dynamic the Patriots' offense can be, they just have so many weapons. And it, it, it's going to take a special team. We're going to talk about the Chiefs in a bit to beat them lest the Patriots make stupid mistakes, which they never do because they're well coached. There could be a or terrible they just injury. Have a completely bad. I mean, they were doing this without their left and right tackle. Yeah. Um, Brady took some hits, so that wasn't great. I right. mean, the offensive line, you want to be sh short up. Right. Um, but as we look at the schedule in the coming weeks, I just don't see them losing uh, yeah. for the foreseeable future. Uh, they're really talented. This is the best I've felt about their defense in a long time. Yeah, it looks really good. And I think, obviously, they're it's week two, right? Like, we can't be super critical of this offense because any other – every other team is still figuring things right. out too so and then you're integrating new pieces and your offensive line is juggling all over the place so I think that's you know there are, those things are going to get figured out but I have a question for you that's not on our list what if knock on wood what if Jarrett Stidham had to come in and play a game if Brady 
you know, something just yeah, needs a game up. Win. I think they can win I games. I don't think they could beat the because Chiefs. Because of or... the talent that they have, I, I don't – I think that, right, I don't think, you, yeah, it would be interesting to see. Or but, maybe Dallas, some of the teams on their schedule. But is there the one road. injury that you think could completely derail, derail the season? No, I don't, other than Brady. They're not other winning the Brady. Super Bowl without Brady, but that would probably be the one, yeah. I mean, even if Brown doesn't make it till the end of the season, which I don't think he will, I think they're fine. Like when Gordon left last year in week 16, they were fine. When Gronk got injured, they still went to the Super Bowl. When Edelman was out for the year, they still went to the Super Bowl. They're sort of built not to rely on one person. And this is kind of, that was kind of my my initial point. Phil Dorsett is still looking phenomenal. You have guys like Rex Burkhead who are like adding, integrating new features to their game. And then I think like your Sony Michels and your uh, James Whites and your kind of old reliables are awesome. Josh Gordon didn't have a great game, but again, I mean, I think there were a lot of pieces and parts to that. But um, there, there's so much talent that it's just the possibilities are endless. And then on the defense, I mean, you're, you're shuffling. Pat Chung gets hurt, and you're shuffling guys around on the defensive side of the ball, and you're moving, moving pieces. Safeties are playing, you know, all over the place. So it's awesome. I love it. It's really <laughs> you it, love a, 40, a, a goose egg on a scoreboard is uh, not something you get NFL, to see every day. Yeah, it's pretty. That's cool. like a college score in and Alabama's like, playing like Southern Connecticut State. And there was a lot of conversation about like why why do they keep playing till the Belichick's very end. Belichick's always been that way. I don't know why people are asking this question. I know. He's kept Brady in for far too long for the last 19 years. And throwing the ball with two minutes left oh, when you're up 37 Oh, his former assistant nothing. is on the other side. Rex Ryan today was talking about that on ESPN. Oh, I wouldn't do that to my former assistant. Bill, Bill is like, you're you not my former assistant anymore. You play to win the game. He was <laughs> obviously proving the, the point, which you you know demonstrated in your, in your story today, yeah. is that after last season, you play full 60. Right. 59 um, minutes isn't always going to win you a game. And it's and for that very reason, even if you're up 30, he doesn't like kneeling. He doesn't like, you know, it's yeah. just not his style. Yeah. All right. I like it. All right. So, new allegations against Antonio Brown. This is all in an article posted from Sports Illustrated. Uh pretty disturbing a lot of it I know you've read parts of it I've read parts of it I haven't really read the whole thing yet um, there are a lot of disturbing stories about this individual uh, off the field and whether or not um, you know you want to see him play football how should how should Patriots fans feel about this guy yeah so when we were talking about topics I sort of think about this as being you feel a little dirty rooting for him if you're a Patriot fan. Yeah. You're rooting for the team, so by default you're rooting for his individual play. Most fans were jumping up and down when he scored the touchdown yesterday. But having this guy in your team sort of feels bad, yeah. especially uh, as you and I know being in the locker room. They have so many high character guys. Now, there's been some bad seeds in the Patriots locker room before, including one who killed people. Uh, there are bad seeds in every locker room in the NFL. So I don't think you'll have 53 choir boys on any team. But when you read these stories, when you know about the allegation prior to them signing him, it just feels a little bad. And you wonder how much the Patriots knew before. And then you hear Robert Kraft saying, I wouldn't have signed him if we knew about this before. But is that sort of just to cover his tail? So. I don't know how Patriot teammates feel about it because it's like they're all going out on the road. Are they calling him and being like, hey, do you want to get dinner tonight uh, at Fountain Blue down in Miami? Are they inviting Antonio Brown? Is he, d does Matthew Slater and Devin McCourty, the leaders on this team, put their arm around him? Or are they sort of just letting him do his own thing, which isn't acting well in the past? So I was talking to Levin Reed about this today in terms of how, like, how we feel as the media to cover him because we try so hard to separate, I think we try, especially in cases like this, we try as sports reporters to separate the player on the football field from the man because we have to talk about what he's doing on the field. Right. We that's our job. Um, what he's and and that gets really hard and really icky, and the and the lines get blurred when you're in the locker room every day, like we are, and you're interacting with these guys. Yes, in a media setting, but like I'll have a conversation with Phil Dorsett like off camera and like. You get to know these guys and you like these guys and um, this is an interesting scenario where there are a lot of bad things that he's done or that, or that there are reports that he's done. So how do we become, you know, the, the mediator and decide who to root for and who not to root for in these kinds of situations? I will say this, like on Sunday when he's playing a football game, like it was fun to see him catch the ball. 
it was fun to see him catch a ball from Tom Brady. It was cool to see him get into the end zone and score a point because of the talent that he possesses, and it's so unique and it's so um, above everyone else that we've seen, really. So you're riding this weird, like, this is what Levin Reed from WBC was saying today, you're riding this weird roller coaster of like, oh, yeah, he scored, and then the new things come out about him, and you're like, ugh. Yeah. And then you go back, and it's Sunday, and he scores, and then it's like, ugh, now we have to talk about him again as a man. And I feel bad for the team. I feel bad for the rest of the guys in that locker room who don't get to talk about this dominating performance two weeks in a row now. You scored 33-3 against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then you beat the Dolphins 43 to nothing. and we're still talking about Antonio Brown and his allegations on Monday. Yeah, on, I think at some Monday. point they'll die down. But I hope so. He hasn't I mean, spoken in the media yet, which was Bush League, but at the same time, was that orchestrated by the team and him? Like, hey, while this stuff's going on, let's just pay the fine maybe yeah. and not because after a football game, when you're asked about these sort of things... That's why maybe he shouldn't be on the field if right. after a game he's asked about these things and not, a f and not about the play. So, yeah, it's a weird situation. It's, pro um, I mean, th much different extent. Uh, they signed a guy from the Arizona Cardinals whose name I'm forgetting three or four years ago, right before the playoffs. He, was, he passed out in his car from a DUI the week before, got cut, and the Patriots signed him. So I remember everyone asking Bill Belichick, why would you – sign this guy who just put he and everyone else's life in danger on the road and the Patriot yeah. way remember is is a thing but it's like in terms of character guys um, Bill Belichick has signed some I, bad eggs in the past and and I'll say this I mean the Devin McCourty's of the world the Matthew Slater's of the world haven't really talked about him much um, and even the wide receivers who are in the film room with him and working with him on a day-to-day -day basis They'll talk about how hard he works, how talented he is, right. how, what he does on the field, but there, I haven't really heard anyone necessarily defend his character. Right. So you wonder, these guys are sitting there like, we just steamrolled the Steelers without this dude. Like, we don't want him around guys who are, you know, young yeah. guys. And, uh, you know, the Gunnar Olszewski is like the innocent, literal, you know, the innocent player who's just coming into the NFL. And his locker's literally two down from Antonio Brown. And Josh Gordon is... Well, I think, a lot I think these guys life. are mature enough to know who to role model, who the role models are in that locker room. If and here's where it gets bad. If Tony Brown rubs off on someone else, and then there becomes like a clique or a bad group, then it's bad. Yeah. If he's isolated, then I, I don't uh, know. Reading this Sports Illustrated article, that doesn't sound like the person he is. It sounds like he doesn't really have people in his life for a long time doesn't really sound like he has an, a circle of friends that want to stick by him just based on this article it's like he brings people into his life he gives them things and then claims that they owe him things back and then he cuts them out and it's this and and he owes all these people he's weird about his according to sports illustrated he's weird about his money this is a very very financially stable individual and he's they're just bizarre um, mentally unstable ways that he goes about day-to-day -day interactions that is concerning for his mental health, yeah. of course, but also the people that you're around. That's that's you can't you can't forget about that. And yes, okay. So, I, in my opinion, if the Patriots knew about all this stuff before they signed him, they wouldn't have signed him, right? That's no. that's what we're saying. But but if they if they didn't know about the at least the sexual the sexual assault allegations, if they didn't know about that, and then they find out about it, why is he still on this team? If they're like, oh, we wouldn't have signed him. If right, you could still cut him if you wanted to. Um, but I don't want to talk down to Patriot fans and say, don't root for him, right. root for him. It's a at weird... the end of the day, they can say, all these are allegations, nothing's been proven in a court of law, and he's on my team, so I'll root for him. Right, that's the weird thing about sports. So I've been really pulled by uh, inner circle of Pat's fan friends yet. But. Yeah, we should do that. Take a poll. Um, uh, I, I think initially, I think there was a lot. There was a lot of excitement around the Antonio Brown signing because of the talent that he brings. Yeah, I just hope. Uh, I just hope this doesn't last forever. I know. Every week, I, I know, and it, it's such a fun team to talk about and to watch without him. I mean, like you know, there's plenty to talk about in terms of football. It would be lo it would be lovely to just talk about a 43 nothing win. Premature for 16 and 0 Patriot talk. We said it jokingly like a week or two because Gresh hates this conversation. I know. Uh, what year was it? Were you here? The year uh, people were saying 16 and 0. Mark Dondero. Was it 17? 
They won the Super 17. Bowl in 16. They went to the Super Bowl. They went to the Super Bowl and lost the Eagles. The year the people were saying 16. So yeah, they won in 16, then 17 going into that season. Because at that point, what had happened? Gronk was back. Um, who did they sign? They signed Gilmore. Yeah. Uh, but already, Sports Illustrated or someone today, ESPN had a 16-0 talk. I heard it on Phil Grimm. As um, it's two weeks of sampling. You look at the schedule, there's a couple slip-ups perhaps, but it's not out of the question. No, it's not. I mean, it's not out of the question at all. I think your toughest test, honestly, I don't think the Chiefs are great. And they're really talented. And Patrick Mahomes is back, and he looks pretty good from what I've seen so far. I haven't really gotten to watch a game start to finish, but cutting the highlights yesterday of their right. game, he looks really good. That's going to be tough, them coming to Foxborough, but it's in Foxborough. And... That's where the Chiefs get owned. Although two years ago on opening night they won, but that was with uh, Alex that was, Smith. That was with Alex Smith. Uh, and then at Philly is going to be really hard. At Philly will be. Uh, I'm no. honestly a little bit more nervous about. Drum roll, please. Cow at, don't say Cowboys. No, 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 no. Cowboys coming into Foxborough. No. At Baltimore. Baltimore. I think that could be tough. They got what some week swag is that? With Lamar. I think that's right before the Early bye week. December maybe. That's right before the bye Late week. November. They have the bye week and then it's Philly. At Philly, I'm, Those I'm pretty sure. Those three uh, and Dallas, home versus Dallas, were probably the toughest tests. Uh, it's conceivable. I don't think it'll happen, uh, but they'll be favored in every game the rest of the way. Do, have you seen the uh, the trailer of the Bill Belichick and Nick Saban right. pre yeah, preview thing? And Bill is saying like, Bill is saying like, you know, maybe we should have lost. You're assuming that he's talking about. Yeah. The well, undefeated that's. Season. I mean, I think there was so much pressure towards the end for them to complete that undefeated season. And they sort of got a little fat and happy towards yeah. the end. There were some close games down the stretch that they could have lost in that season. And I think it helped the Giants. They played them the last regular season game. The Giants left the field thinking like they could beat them. So they weren't afraid of the Patriots. But very few teams over the years, the both Giants teams that won the Super Bowl and the Eagles teams, weren't afraid of the Patriots. They played the game aggressively. They got to the quarterback, and that's how you beat the Patriots. So uh, anyone who's scared of the Patriots, they have no chance. Yeah. But I think this, is, this could creep into November. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be like, at what point, who's going to ask the first question? Who's going to ask the question to Bill? I hope not this week. <laughs> who's going to ask the someone, question to you Bill? You think someone asked this week? No, no, no. But like, it's possible. Down the road, that would be hysterical. Byron Burnett, what's his name? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, someone would be like, Phil, have you heard the chatter of 19-0? Uh, I, I, I hope that'd be one of his chuckle. Uh, the one time he was asked if there was a quarterback controversy, and he let out like a sarcastic laugh. It was like really a laugh. That's what I'm hoping he uh, – it feels, though, that there's, like, I don't want to say an FU mode, but there's, like, a there's like a determination foot on the gas pedal feel to this team. 100%. And I think signing, signing Antonio Brown was yeah. kind of the cherry on top, like, hey, we're well, going for Edelman's it. Edelman's last contract year, Brady's last contract year. Um, we're going for it. <laughs> who's we? That's what I'm saying they're saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you're on the Well, picture. I'm down to go to Miami in February. Are you? <laughs> uh – yeah. Is this me next? Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, so we just kind of alluded to this, but Patriots, Chiefs, AFC Championship game rematch. Is that like done Done. 100% certainty, done deal. barring injury. All due respect to the Ravens. Um, who's good in the AFC? Anyone? Texans, Chargers. Colts, Jacoby Brissett. Colts. Uh, who am I missing here? I can't think of anyone else. Ravens. As, as long as there's not a slip up from either team. Pats Chiefs, if they win in Foxborough, it'll be in Gillette. They went to Kansas City last year and beat them, so I'd make them the favorite there. Uh, but you never know. So I think there's a foregone conclusion. It's these two. It's almost like the NBA when you know it was Warriors Cavs every year for about five years. Patriots Chiefs. NFC is a little bit more interesting. Bummer yeah. news today about Big Ben and Breeze. The world um, is a, the, I, I tweeted this, but like the NFL is a better place when Drew Breeze is in it is yeah, playing. When like, everyone's healthy. Just, a couple years ago, a bunch of QBs were hurt. Rodgers was hurt. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think who else. There was a, a couple big names down there. I think Breeze that, that was hurt for a little bit of that year. Hmm, maybe like one game. Yeah, and Big Ben too. You think he's Luck retiring? Is hurt that. I don't know. He may not be. That's elbow. Like, what is that? He signed Tommy a three-year contract. This actually could be good for the Steelers. If they tank at a high pick, maybe they, like, sort of rebuild with that. Yeah. But Trevor Lawrence is until next year. You have Tua, who probably goes to the Dolphins. Yeah. And I thought Josh Rosen actually threw the ball nicely yesterday. Why isn't he their quarterback? I don't under. It I makes can't no even, sense. I can't talk about it. Is that for tanking purposes? 
I guess. You can't play football and tank. Like, you can play baseball with, like, a dog crap roster like the Orioles and, like, tank and inadvertently just because you're that – your roster is that bad. But in football, like – you can't run slower or tackle le- like right. the game isn't played where like, you don't. So many and so many of those pieces are interchangeable. Like and the, the like you have 53 guys that like have earned a spot on. And a they're roster. trying to get other contracts. They want to make a Pro Bowl. They have incentives in their contracts. You can't right. not try. So I don't know when people say they're trying to tank. I mean, I guess from a roster perspective, I know they've shipped out you know Tunsil. They're starting left tackle. But uh, so what, who do we think in the NFC right now? Rams again? I had the Saints before the year. Rams, Rams, Packers are good, yeah. Cowboys. Cowboys, I think, could be there. I think Cowboys are going to. They'll always choke. Garrett stinks. Sucks. Sucks. About, uh, Cowboys haven't won. The Cowboys haven't been to the NFC Championship game since the 90s. Although Dak is throwing the ball really yeah, well. Yeah, Dak looks good. So that's interesting when you have not just Zeke running your offense. Absolutely. All right. That's it. We kind missed of more low this energy week. tonight for us. It's kind of sad. this is what I don't like about all this controversy. <laughs> what, it's, we're what? just like, ugh, what? like I, it's no. exhausting. This is why I tell all our news reporters in the newsroom, like, I could not be a news reporter. I don't want to talk about allegations. Like, I don't want to talk about. I have so much respect you and just appreciation. Just want to talk about rainbows and lollipops. I just want to talk about like sports. I just want to talk, about, talk sports. about sports. There wasn't that much AB talk today. No, I know, but like our our that maybe we should have. Finished with that one. Finished with that <laughs> You're question. You're bummed out? Yeah, you were just reading no, the article. Like, I know. I was reading the article. It's, like, pretty gross. All right. That's, that's it for the latest edition of Double OT. We hope to have more back next week. Catch us on WPR.com, podcast, Google Play, Stitcher. What else? Stitcher? Social media, at Ruthie Polinski, at Yanni Caracas, at M. Harris Gordon, at The Real Grash. He's not even on this show. At Small Man. <laughs> at J.P. Smalls. All right. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.